unto thee, unto the Lord, unto the Lord shall the gathering of his people be. We are gathering together unto thee, Jesus, we are here, Jesus, we are here, Holy Ghost, we are here, we are here for you, King of Kings, we are here, Ancient of Days, we are here, Lord of Lords, we are here, we are here for you, Lord of Lords, we are here. Lord of Lords, we are here. A shout of days, we are here. We are here for you. Everlasting Father, we thank you. A shout of days, we bless your name for this first Sunday in the month of July 2020. To you alone be all glory, honor, and adoration. We appreciate you for your kindness to us. We thank you for you are merciful. We thank you for showing us mercy. We thank you for forgiving our sins. We thank you. We adore you. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Precious God, we thank you. Baba, we bless your name. Thank you for your messes all the time upon our lives for the past week for the past month for this month and even the rest of the year father you will be there for us father we thank you glory to your holy name thank you for giving us our trance thank you for your daughter that will be ministry this morning father you will endow her with your grace and with your anointing from above. Father, people shall be blessed. Your name alone will be glorified. We return the glory back to you. Blessed be thy name. Thank you for your presence this year. Because it is written, we are two or three shall gather together. In your name, your presence is always there. Thank you, Holy Spirit. At the end, of the service today. Father, we shall praise your holy name. Thank you, wherever the children of God shall gather together, all our brethren in their different homes. Father, you will visit them, you will touch them, you will meet them at the point of their need. Jesus will be exalted. Hallelujah to your name. Thank you, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, Prince of Peace. The everlasting Father. The I am that I am. Hallelujah to your name. Glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. We bring glory to the Lord. He reigns. We bring glory to the Lord. He reigns. He reigns. He reigns. We we give glory to the Lord. He reigns. We give glory to the Lord. He reigns. We give glory to the Lord. He reigns. He reigns. He reigns. We give glory to our God. He reigns. God bless you. You are welcome. Adoration to our God. He reigns. Adoration. To our God, He reigns, He reigns, He reigns, He reigns, He reigns. Adore 
salvation to our God, he reigns. Hallelujah. All honor to our God, he reigns. All the honor to our God, he reigns. He reigns. He reigns. He reigns. All honor to our God, he reigns. There is none holy as our God. There is none beside him. Neither is there any work like our God, there is none, only as the Lord. Amen. Amen. Amen in Jesus' name. Please let us pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you once again for this wonderful opportunity you are giving to us to come into your presence. We thank you for the first Sunday of a new month. For the Bible says that your mercies, they are new every day. We thank you for all the new things that you have in store for us. We thank you for you, our God and you, our Lord. For your protection, for your provision, for the gift of life, for the gift of redemption. Dear Heavenly Father God, we ask that you come and have your way today, O Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. For the Bible says that the entrance of your word, he bringeth light. Father, we pray, O Lord, today for your word. Let your word Father, bring a new understanding, new meaning into our life today, O Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father God, we ask, O Lord, that your name and your name alone be glorified Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father God, I submit myself, my Lord God, at your feet. My Lord God, I decrease, O oh Lord, that you will increase in me. And all my all our areas today, Father God, we pray, O oh Lord God, that the word, your word will go forth into their lives, into their homes, O oh Lord, and they be able to begin to experience. Father God, new revelation, new relationship with you in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Father God, for you are able to do exceedingly more than we can ask and more than we can imagine. We give you all the glory, all the honor and adoration. In Jesus' wonderful name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Right, we just want to, I just want to thank every one of you this morning or this night wherever you are watching us from thank you for joining us and i believe that uh, your tuning in is not by mistake the lord god will do a new thing in your life our lord jesus christ that we are proclaiming he will surely visit you in the mighty name of jesus Amen. you will not regret your life and the life that god has given to you you will leave it for his fulfillment and his plan for your life will surely be fulfilled I thank you very much. Um, we just want to encourage ourselves this morning. You know, for the past uh, few months, I would say, especially, you know, the part of the, uh, the world where we live, for the past uh, three or four months, you know, things seem quite bleak. I may not bleak for the children of God. But you could see the fears around, you could see the atmosphere, the tension, the suspicion, the sadness, the low mood. And, you know, everywhere was shut down and some people, you know, couldn't cope with, you know, it, it seems as everything has come to an end. But we give glory to God, for the Lord God has protected us, he has kept us. You know, where many people have said that there was a casting down. But because God is with us and because we have Jesus Christ, because of his mercy, we have been able to say there is a lifting up. So God has been faithful, you know, like he says in his word in the book of Psalm 91, he said that those who dwell in the secret place of the Most High God, 
They are hidden under the shadow of his wings. So we thank God for his protection. And the Lord God Almighty will be with us in Jesus' name. This morning, uh, this afternoon, this evening, like I said, wherever you're watching us from, we just want to, um, you know, just to encourage ourselves as believers and also those I believe that uh, they are yet to come to um, a relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ, how to um, have a new life, new life in Jesus Christ. And some of us who might believe that as a believer, well, I already have a new life in Jesus, but how do we maintain it? How do we remain in it? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So I just want to, we'll be taking our text, our main text is from Ephesians chapter 4, Ephesians chapter 4, just give you time just to open that, so the book of Ephesians comes after Galatians and it's in the New Testament, and uh, from chapter 4 and it's from verse 17, so if let us read from verse 17 to the end first. And I'm reading from the Good News, Good News Bible, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And the Word of God says, In the Lord's name, then, I warn you, do not continue to live like the evil, whose thoughts are worthless, and whose minds are in the dark. They have no part in the life that God gives, for they are completely ignorant and stubborn. They have lost all feeling of shame, they give themselves over to vice and to all sorts of indecent things without restraint. That was not what you learned about Christ. You certainly heard about him. And as his followers, you were taught the truth. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Right. And verse uh, start reading again from verse 21 you certainly heard about him that is the Lord Jesus and as his followers you were taught the truth that is in Jesus so get rid of your old self which made you live as you used, used to the whole self that was being destroyed by his deceitful desires your hearts and minds must be made completely new and you must put on the new self which is created in God's likeness. Just give me a moment. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It says, Your hearts and minds must be made completely new, and you must put on the new self, which is created in God's likeness, and reveals itself in the true life that is upright and holy. No more lying then. Everyone must tell the truth to his fellow believer because we are all members together in the body of Christ. If you become angry, do not let your anger lead you into sin and do not stay angry all day. Don't give the devil a chance. The man who used to rob must stop robbing and start working in order to earn an honest living for himself and to be able to help the poor. Do not use harmful words, but only helpful words, the kind that build up and provide what is needed, so that what you say will do good to those who hear you. Verse 30, we're still reading from Ephesians chapter four. And do not make God's Holy Spirit sad, for the Spirit is God's mark of ownership on you, a guarantee that the day will come when God will set you free Get rid of all bitterness, passion, and anger. No more shouting or insults. No more hateful feelings of any sort. Instead, be kind and tender hearted to one another and forgive one another as God has forgiven you through Christ. May the Lord bless his word. Amen. You know, when... To First of all, you know, when I was thinking of, uh, when I, uh, you know, said to my husband, he asked me, he said, oh, what, uh, what is it that you wanted to share? I said, oh, new life. He said, oh, new life what? 
new life in Christ, he told this, you know, suggested. And I totally agreed. Um, because, like, at any eyesight, I thought about it and I said, I thought to myself, I said, you know, new life in Christ. So there has to be a differentiation. There has to be um, uh, an understanding of what new life that we're talking about. Because I remember, I don't remember as a child, even as a young adult, and even nowadays for many people, you know, we have, when it comes to the end of the year, we have uh, resolutions, or this is the old things I used to do, and this is the new things I'm going to be doing in this new year. And then even from time to time, we might make the resolution that uh, we wanted to, it might just be maybe like general things, you know, general things to do with the world. I want to lose weight, I want a new job, I want to move house, and so on and so forth. So there is a desire there, a desire to change, a desire to move from one position to another, a desire to change from old to new. So obviously, you know, when we make that resolution, we realize that you know, come to realization that oh, there's something that is undesirable. And this thing that is undesirable, I'm going to attempt, I'm going to do all possible means, I'm going to do physically tried, I'm going to emotionally tried to make a change. Praise the Lord. So, as, but then when you come to think about, you know, as believers in Christ, the new life, we cannot do it without the help of God. And then if we're saying we want to move from the old to the new, then it's important for us to know what are the old? What is the old life that I need to move away from? You know, for many of us, when we came, when we came to Christ, when we, maybe some of us were born into Christian homes, you know, we used to go to church. Um, I mean, like somebody like myself, you know, I went to so many different churches, you know, because I was born to a Christian home. I really did not really understand what it was, you know, to, to be a believer. So, um, I love God, but, um, you know, I like going to church. I like doing, doing all the normal things that you would do as a Christian, you know, all the religious stuff, you know, choir work and this and that, but never really having understanding, you know, of the importance of being, of being born again. Didn't have the, you know, the knowledge of what it means to be born again. So at that time, so I did not really used to pay, you know, one did not really pay much attention to what was the whole life, what was the, we need to change from, you know, like in this um, text that we read, is they talked about learn, is said that what you've learned from Christ, what you learn from our master, what you learn from God. So it's very important, you know, that what have we learned? Praise the Lord. So, I mean, like I said, people in the world, if often testify, how they were, they were able to achieve their target with help. Sometimes if they need to change, they're going through some emotional difficulties or maybe psychological problems, then they might, you know, seek the help of therapy uh, or one form of the treatment or the other, praise the Lord. Some of them, they want to maybe lose weight, so they want to change, make more from the old to the new. The old, the old for them is the, uh, the weight gain, yeah, and the new, the new life for them will be to be slim, to lose weight. So then they might go to the gym. Praise the Lord. But all these things, they're all earthly. They're all perishable things. They're all things, you know, like Paul says that all things are counted as dung. You know, all these old things are counted as dung. You know, all the prestige, all the honor, are counted as nothing but dung. In fact, Bible says all our self-righteousness, they are nothing but filthy rags. So we need the help of God. We need to understand what is our whole life that we need to move away, especially the things that God do not want us to do, the things, the life that God wants us to to leave behind. Especially when we say that we come, we we are believers, that we have moved from the old to the new, we have confessed our sins, and we understand why Christ came. We understand why. You know, God sent his son to come and die for us on the cross. 
praise the Lord, Amen. and at the purpose of the cross, praise the Lord. Amen. So, before the new, what is the hold? What is the hold? In Luke chapter 15, verse 11, we know the story about the prodigal son. The prodigal son, the Bible says that he came to his senses, and then he said, ah, you know, why am I, why am I living like this? Why, why do I have to remain such a life as this? I don't need to remain the life of, you know, feeding and dying with swines. You know, when I know where I came from, when I know, you know, the household, and when I know my heritage, when I know the father that I have, the Bible says that he came to his senses, and then he said, I will arise, and then I will go to my father. So he, over, he, he obviously realized that he needed a change. He needed a permanent move. Hence likewise for us as well, our hold, before we can, have, before we can make like a positive um, change, you know, we have to come to our senses. We actually have to, you know, admit that the old life is not what is not worth following. Praise the Lord. Amen. Um, like in my like in my profession, sometimes you know when I'm, um, you know when I'm trying when I'm speaking to to clients, and you know telling me about these problems, they're telling me about this and that, and as they actually say, I usually say to message, you know, before you can have a solution you have to believe there is a problem. So if do not believe, if you believe there is a problem, then there is no way, you know, you can even make a start towards finding a solution. And he also, like, likewise, Apostle Paul, you know, in his experience of, um, you know, on the road, uh, Damascus experience, you know, he had a divine encounter. And then he realized that he needed a change from his old life to the new life. The old life of thuggery, the old life of violence, the old life of evil intentions, even though, you know, he falsely believed that he was working for God, he was serving for God. But when he had a divine encounter, you know, with the Holy One of Israel, with Jesus Christ himself, with the Messiah, then he suddenly realized, you know, he made a permanent decision and said, okay, you know, that is why he was, I believe that he was even able to write, you know, the, even the book of Ephesians that we've read from that he was able to identify that what is the old life and then the new life that he needs that he needs to move into and that the new life that can only you know lead to eternal life praise the lord Amen. going back to as believers colossians chapter 13 says colossians chapter 1 let us look colossians chapter 1 Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter, Colossians comes after, this is the second book after Ephesians. So this is one of my favorite um, passages. And it's just verse uh, 13. He said, the Lord rescued us from the power of darkness and brought us safe into the kingdom of his dear son, whom we are by whom we are set free that is our sins are forgiven when as believers when we come to christ when we come to god through christ sincerely when we come to god through christ you know we confess our sins we say god i know i'm a sinner and i believe in the work that you sent your son to do for me on the cross our sins are forgiven. The Bible says that all things are passed away. Everything is made new. Everything that is negative, that is written against us, we believe that the blood has nullified them, has canceled them, has washed them away. So we have a new life from that time. So the new life starts in Christ Jesus from that time. So the old life, we are to leave it behind. Nobody, I'm not saying it, that it's going to be, something's going to be like an instant. So that is why the, the scripture encourages us that we are to walk at our salvation. You know, we are walking at our salvation. We know walking at our, at our salvation is that not that by works, not by the works that you do that brings you salvation. 
but you're doing your own con your, your own part jesus christ has did his own part so we're doing our own part daily you know to follow him to do his will to please him you know like the book of romans chapter 12 from verse 1 to 3 says to please him to please the master to be a tool that is useful in his hand for his glorious use praise the lord so god deliver us you know by our faith in the completed work of jesus christ on the cross from out of the hold to the new then what is the hold the hold is talking about sins the old life is the one that we previously we sold ourselves out to the old vices the hatred the malice the gossips the hunger the jealousy praise the lord Amen. Like uh, the, the Colossians says, you know, in chapter 3 from verse 7 to 11, we have the evil passions, the loss, the obs obscenity, pride, you know, not knowing God, you know, not, uh, not showing love, full of hatred, unforgiveness, not doing the will of God. You, you know, the whole life is, you know, not caring, you know, the selfishness, the selfishness of our hearts, the selfishness of life no conscience like the bible says in the book of timothy chapter 4 verse 2 you know we have no conscience you know living a, a, a religious life idolatry and so on and so forth so god has delivered us from that so the reason why i just want us to have brought that up is that when we're talking about the new life we need to understand what is the old life what is the whole life that we're talking about so if we do not even know what is wrong what we have been doing that we need to abstain from then how can we you know know how to uh, know how to um not to put a new wine into old skin so the old skin the old the old life is the old skin, the old wine skin you know the things that does not bring glory to god the things that makes satan to be happy praise the lord Amen. may the lord help us in jesus name Amen. So that is the whole life. So today, please, even as we are sharing this word together, so let us just think back and you know ask ourselves, because the Bible says that we examine ourselves. Let each and every one of us examine ourselves and say, Father, what is still is still in my life? What is the things that I need to? I'm still carrying on to carry carrying on the things that I'm still holding on to. So I mean, like some of the uh, Bible passages, like in our own time. We can go back, we can mediate, uh, meditate on them. You know, like Romans chapter 1 verse 26. You know, it talks about, it says it comes to a time when God, you know, tries so much, you know, to, 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 to correct us. The Spirit of God tries to guide us and, you know, to, to correct us. It comes to a point of time, God will just say, okay, just let, let them do as they wish. Let them do as they want. May that not be our portion in Jesus' name. So Romans 1 verse 26 and you know, um, Colossians 3 from verse 7 to 11, we have Galatians 4 verse 8, Timothy 4 verse 2. Praise the Lord. So in our own time, let us go back on that. Let us meditate on the words. Let us examine ourselves. And then let us ask the Spirit of God to help us, even like to, you know, to forsake all these old things. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. Yeah. So going back to our main text again, you know, from verse 17 to 24, you know, there are certain things uh, that non-believers, you know, the non-believers in their old ways, they say it's darkened. Praise the Lord. For somebody who, do, who does not believe Christ, somebody who does not have any, who has not have any encounter with Christ, they don't, the Bible says that they're darkened. Their ways is darkened. Even though there might even be things that they want to do, but because they do not have the Spirit of God in them, because they have not been regenerated, they do not have the understanding. But the Bible says in that um, Ephesians from verse 17, what he is saying, he says that in the Lord's name, that very first um, verse 17, he says in the Lord's name then, I won't warn you, do not continue to live like the hidden, whose thoughts are worthless and whose minds are in the dark they have no part in the life that god gives for they are completely ignorant and stubborn so as believers 
what the Bible is saying to us is that we should know better. Praise the Lord. Amen. We must not, once we say we are believers, we must not continue to live like the hidden. Our way, must, our attitude, our, you know, our works of life, the way we approach others, the way we speak to others, the way, you know, even like we are places of work, you know, our neighborhood, there has to be a difference. People have to see that there's actually, because the Bible says in the book of Acts, it says that, you know, the, the followers, the disciples were first called Christians because they could see that they were Christ-like in the way they talk to people, the way they relate to other people, you know, their mode of dressing, the way they talk. Praise the Lord. Okay. So as believers, is warning us that, you know, we must not be like the Edens whose minds are dark. They have no part in the life that God gives. So we have a part in, in the life that God gives. That part comes from Christ. You know, by our faith in Christ, that is why, you know, we can boldly say that, you know, we are children of the Most High God. So the new life is learning and knowing the truth in Jesus. That is the life of truth. Because knowing that the salvation that we have is a gift that we are saved by grace and that when it comes to spiritual and internal matters we can't be good persons we do need christ we do need the help of god we do need to remain you know to remain in him we do need to understand the importance of maintaining of remaining in the new life to on the, the importance of walking in the new life having understanding of what it is to to uh, to remain in the new life verse 22 says we are hence to take off to get rid of old self renewing of our minds praise the lord let's can we just look at romans 12 1 to 3 romans 12 romans 12 1 to 3 what are the new lives, the new life that we have in Christ? How can we maintain the new life? How do we walk in the new life? What should we be doing in the new life as believers? Praise the Lord. So Romans 12, it says, So then, my brothers, because of God's great mercy to us, I appeal to you, offer yourselves as a living sacrifice to God, dedicated to his service and pleasing to him. This is the true worship that you should offer. Do not conform yourselves to the standards of this world, but let God transform you inwardly by complete change of your mind. Then you will be able to know the will of God, what is good and is pleasing to him and is perfect. Amen. So we pause appeal to us to offer ourselves as a living sacrifice to the Lord, to be dedicated to his service, to, you know, to do what is pleasing to our master. Because I, there, was a, uh, there was a time people came to Jesus Christ in the book of Mark, I believe it's Mark chapter 4, Mark, yes, book of Mark. And they said, what can we do in order to inherit the key to do the work of God? And he says, oh, believe in him that was sent, and also believe in God. So the we this an appeal to us that to offer ourselves as a sacrifice to God, you know, to that is and to be to serve Him the true worship. The true worship is refusing to behave like the world behave. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the living Jesus. Because the Bible even em, employs us. It says we are to be dead to sin in Romans six chapters, Romans six verse six, to be dead to sin and to be alive to God in Christ, to take off, it says take off, you take off the corrupt nature, you know, because the corrupt nature is like the human body, you know, the human body has, it has different diverse parts, praise the Lord, and then the corrupt nature, we're doing things that it might seem right, it seems that, you know, it's going to bring happiness, but at the end of the day, they don't bring happiness, they only bring sadness, so we have to check ourselves praise the lord that this old life it can only bring misery so you need to take it off god we are implored to take off the whole life praise the lord 
we are implored, God, we are, it's an appeal to us that in order to have a meaningful life as believers, in order to have a joyful life as a believer, in order for the glory of God to be seen in our lives, in order for his name to be to be to in order for his name to be glorif glorified, in order for other people to see that for sure that we are Christians and the children of God, we have to remove, we have to take it off, we have to admit where there is a problem, we have to address it, we have to continue to examine ourselves on a daily basis, every single time. Like keep asking yourself, Father, where am I remaining? Lord, help me. I need your help. I know this character. I know this behavior. I know these words I've said is not of God. Does not bring glory to your name. So therefore, I'm taking it off the old character. The old character. I want you, Father Lord, to walk in me. So we need to check ourselves from time to time. So it's like old garments. The Bible is telling us that we are to take it off. Take off the old nature. Take off the corrupt nature. The nature that you know you can only bring misery. The nature that the nature that that can only bring unhappiness the nature that the name the name of god will not be glorified so i then ask us god you know to to put on us is 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 garment praise the lord you know we understand you know like the bible explains to us that when we got born again the the old nature is taken off jesus christ gives us his garment of righteousness the old garment is taken off so we must make sure that do our best that we don't go we are not like dogs that goes back to his vomit like the book of peter says so we must totally the new life can we can achieve by depending on god's God's grace depends on god's grace for him to generate his regenerating grace for him to generate us to generate our mind to change our mindset to change our attitude to give us the enabling power that will keep help us to keep on to to lead and to remain the new life of righteousness and holiness praise the lord Amen. and then in that verse 5 it said our behaviors the new life is our behavior our behaving as believers our behaviors in the body of christ how do we behave how do we relate to each other it is very very important yes you know we might say that we are we are a body we are believers uh, quite often we use the uh, we know the slangs we, uh, uh, the language to each other but it's very important how we relate, how we relate to each other, our behaviors, how we communicate with one another as body of Christ. You know, our truthfulness to each other, our honesty, our openness. Praise the Lord. You know, we must avoid the life of deceiving, false flatteries, you know, putting our putting people on on, uh, on uh, high pedestals. When you know very well these things are wrong, that is the whole life. The new life is being honest to your brethren, to your fellow brothers and sisters. Praise the Lord. Amen. And then, you know, it, it warns us against anger. The whole life is the hunger, the hunger and the, you know, ungoverned passions. It is, it is dangerous for our hearts. These are the things that the devil can use in order to be, to penetrate into one's life. You know, when we're still holding on to the new things of anger, of jealousy, of, of spite in our you know it darkens it darkens our relationship it hinders our relationship with god and you know and the whole life you know this is what is like when we when we do things that does not bring glory to god when we do things to each other that does not honor god when we when we are not open with each other as believers it's like an avenue that the enemy use you know to act in one's life it's like telling the devil that I consent to you coming to my life, you know, and then to come and have your way. He, the devil uses it as an, uh, as an entry point, you know, to torment a believer's life. Praise the Lord. So the new life, like I said earlier, you know, is not about our work. It's not depending on work. It's actually depending. It's depending on God's grace. It's depending on the help of the Holy Spirit. It's depending on the faith you know, of Christ, having faith in the completed work on the cross. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, one of the things um, I just want to bring, you know, is especially, especially during this uh, time of the COVID, you know, when the churches, you know, um, buildings, you know, you can't close the church of God, but like the buildings, you know, the place of the buildings where people come together, they 
a lot of being closed because even like the part of the world where we live at the moment you know all the buildings are still closed so everybody's having to you know worship online praise the lord so it's you know now you see that for a lot of ministers the new the old life is been maybe before you have been depending on people's tithes you've been depending on offering but then you've not been working the new life now will be actually you need to go out you need to walk you need to you know walk with your own hands and not to depend on others not to not to feed you know on tithes and offerings you know um as for you for those who come from our part of the um i think from nigeria there's currently an issue about um a man was recently uh, arrested apparently you know he's arrested because he's reportedly he's been involved you know in the international crimes and he's named you know quite a number of people which is quite very shocking i was surprised that you know how could so and so people who have been have been involved that is what he alleged you know so and then you know we learned that this was a man that you know he's been taking you know some some time tights was taken to you know the money was paying in tights was running into millions if not several millions so and now you know it is and um, it's for you know ministers as well to see actually that this kind of thing does not bring glory it does not bring honor it does not bring it's not of a good report you know for the body of christ so ministers do actually need to go out they need to go out and walk praise the lord find something to do praise the lord our new life it talks about communication our communication what kind of words are we using what kind of words did you used to use before were you somebody who used to use filter language before so the bible is saying that as a believer so you the our new life must your words must be seasoned with salt praise the lord so the bible says that the future words it corrupts the minds and manners of those who hear them so christ christians we need to be mindful of our words and also our new life is having the principle of love showing kindness to one another not just within the, within the body of christ even to your fellow human beings the new life if you're someone who used to be a very short temper before who did not have life for for other people now irrespective of their age irrespective of the race irrespective of their background irrespective of whether they're old whether they're young poor or rich but we are to show kindness the principle of love showing kindness to one another forgiveness praise the lord the new life is avoiding behaviors that you know grieve the spirit of god you know because it is by him that we are sealed we are still by him you know to the day of redemption praise the lord so we must avoid behaviors we must avoid attitude we must avoid acts that grieves the heart of the spirit of god because the bible says in first in second corinthians chapter 3 verse 17 let us go into that can we just open second corinthians second corinthians chapter 3 so it's just a few of the last words second corinthians You know it's just um i you know i just wanted to highlight you know just to remind us because i believe that uh, as believers we know you know the the work of father holy spirit in our lives the importance of the holy spirit in our lives even in the work of the redemption and you know as jesus christ promised if you go to corinthians chapter second corinthians chapter three uh, second chapter 3 verse 17 second Corinthians chapter 3 verse 17 right so the Bible says now the Lord now the Lord the Lord is Jesus now the Lord is this in this in this passage is the spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is present there is freedom so as believers when we're still continuing in the old life 
when we are still doing things that bring glory to God, whereas when our behavior does not, uh, you know, it, it, it does not show that that we are Christians. You understand me? Because, you know, the words of our mouth, yes, we might say the right thing, but we might look it, we look the part of a Christian, because I remember there was a time, you know, you look the part, you're supposed to look the part of a Christian, but what about the character? That is why Jesus Christ said that it's not what, you know, that it's, it's not what, it's what is they are from the abundance of the heart, you know, that is what the, the, the mouth speaketh, that is circumcision, the circumcision of the heart, not the outward appearance, not the outward circumcision, but it's the circumcision of the heart that is very, very important. So it is very, for us, our behavior, we must not grieve the Spirit of God. And in fact, when we are, when we do things, when we remain in the whole life, when we refuse to change, when we refuse to examine ourselves, when we refuse to ask God, the Spirit of God, to help us to change, when we refuse to remain in the will of God, we are grieving the Spirit of God. And when we are grieving the Spirit of God, we are grieving Jesus Christ. When we are grieving Jesus Christ, it's as if we're saying that the work that was done on the cross, that is of no importance. And it's like what the Bible says in the book of Peter, as it says, it's like when somebody goes back to his own vomit. So please, today, well, I just want this word, just want to encourage us that now, you know, we, is, and we are being given, it's, it's like a new new life has started. The COVID has, um, this part of the world, you know, we had the lockdown, the lockdown now has been, everything is now coming back to some uh, normality. Praise God for that. You know, for us not to continue the way we were, for us not to remain in our old attitude, for us to have a total change of heart, to have a renewal of mind, to have the Spirit of God to help us, you know, to live a life of a life of service to the Father, to do do things that bring glory to His name, not to grieve Him, because when we are grieving the Spirit of God, we are grieving Jesus, and when we are grieving Jesus, we are grieving God Himself. Because Jesus Christ is the Holy Lord, He is God the Father, He is the Son, and He is the Holy Spirit, and there's only one God. Praise the Lord. So it's very, very important for us as believers, please, to have a rethink, to have a re-examine of our lives, that the, the whole life, not to go back to it, to, <coughs> to re, not to remain in our former way. It's anything that we have done that does not bring glory to God, to confess it. Praise, praise the Lord, because like the book of Peter says that when we remain, make us understand, when we remain in our whole life, is that we are in denial of the work that Jesus Christ did on the cross. Praise the Lord. So we need to help, we need to ask God, the help of the Holy Spirit, to help us to remain. We need his help, we need his assistance, we need his guidance, we need his leading. We need, you know, because the Bible says that it's a child that he loves. That is chastised. Even when we need to be chastised, we need to ask God, please chastise me. Chastise me, Spirit of God, because I do not want to go back to my whole vomit. I do not want to remain in my old life. I want to have understanding. I want to have more relationship with you. I want to know you more. I want others to see Jesus Christ in me. I want others to know that I'm serving the living God, that I'm a true child of God. And most importantly, I want eternal life. I do not want, because I know that you know, things of this world, they are perishable, but you are the eternal. So we need to remain in faith. So and we need Holy Spirit to help us to walk and to remain and to understand. Because he is a sanctifier and he is the one that can help us. He is the one that can lead us. And he is the one as children of, as his children, that will help us to know that when we are doing something that is contrary to the will of God. Praise the Lord. So this morning, I do not want to take more of your time. I just want us to, in our own spare time, you know, to go back to the Bible um, text that we have we have shared together, and then to ask God and say, Lord, you know, I just want to thank you. Most important thing, we always have to be grateful unto God, because it's not Him that will it, neither Him to run it. It's the Lord that shared mercy, and whatever might be our self righteousness, they are nothing but filthy rags before the Lord. But it's the righteousness of Jesus Christ that is most important. And in order to remain in that righteousness, we must forget our old ways. We must come to God, you know, like the prodigal son, and never to return back to, you know, living with swine. 
May the Lord help us in the mighty name of Jesus. And the new life that we have in Christ Jesus, I pray today that none of us will lose it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. That from today, from this time henceforth, we will continue to walk in newness of life. And those of us who have been walking in newness of life, that will not lose it in the mighty name of Jesus. And at this moment in time, for anyone who is watching with us, if you if you have not um, experienced, you know, if not, if you have not even made a start, you know, about the new life, I would like to thank this opportunity that if you like to give your give your life to Jesus, because the new new life starts from the time when you come to Jesus, when you give your life to Jesus, when you confess Him and know Him as your personal Lord and Savior. That is when you can you know, you can boast and say that I have a new life. And then once we have given our life to Christ and with his help and by the help of the Holy Spirit, he will then he will be guiding us, he will be helping us, and we will inherit eternal life. I thank you very much for watching us. Let us just pray. Dear Heavenly Father God, we just want to thank you today for what you have done. Dear Spirit of our Lord Jesus Christ, my Lord, we have planted your word we have planted the seed it is only you O oh lord that can make it to germinate it's only you O oh lord my god that can make it to grow father i bring every brother every sister all those who have who have joined us my lord this live telecast worldwide that dear father holy spirit that your word the word of god the word of jesus jesus christ himself that has gone forth today my lord god will touch their lives in the mighty name of jesus Father God, that you help each and every every one of us, my Lord God, to forget, my Lord God, to overcome, Father God, to, to put behind our whole life and the new life that we have in Christ, that we will begin and to walk in it in the mighty name of Jesus. Dear Father Holy Spirit, help us, O Lord, Father God, to not to behave in the way that is contrary to the will of our Heavenly Father. We thank you for all that you have done. We thank you for you are able to do exceedingly more and abundantly more than we can ask or imagine. We thank you for you exist and that you will give unto us even more than our heart desire. And we thank you for our life will never be the same. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. Thank you, Father. And Father God, we all those who have confessed you, have given their lives to you, O oh Lord. Dear Father, Lord, I pray that from today, my Lord, that you begin to do a new thing in their lives, that they start to have new experience, new revelation, and they'll be able to know you, to know you more and more. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' wonderful name, I have prayed. Amen. Thank you. Amen. 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 Praise be to the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank God for that uh, word from heaven. May the Lord bless you uh, this morning, this afternoon, this evening, wherever you are, join us, we bless the name of the Lord. And finally, I just have this verse 16 of 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16. Therefore, we do not give up, even though our outer person is being destroyed our inner person is being renewed day by day renewal of our inner inner being has to be every day don't be tired of hearing the word of god faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of god on a daily basis the type of people you mingle yourself with determines how your hearts can be renewed your inner mind can be renewed so wash out we are in the dispensation where people are giving up people are withdrawing from you know church to church there are so many fake churches all over the places wash out don't be careless don't go to a particular church because you see people going there. Not all that glitters that is gold. Let your mind be renewed on a daily basis through the reading of the scriptures. The word of God is powerful. Christianity 
is a personal decision. It's having encounter with your God, your maker. So wash out. Make sure there's a union between you and the Spirit of God. There's a connection on a daily basis. Don't give up. Don't give up. It's not over until it is over. The Lord will renew your strength. The Lord will help you, stand by you. People are falling away. People are being discouraged. You know, one way or the other. Things they never expected, you know, happens in the churches because they are not looking unto Jesus. They are looking unto their Jew. They are looking unto their pastor. Many people are unfaithful. You can't, you can't trust people today. Mostly in the churches. People are no more reliable. People are not dependable. People, people are not trustworthy. You know, you, it's difficult to get someone that can be trusted in all these churches today. But stand out. Be unique. Be different. Don't be like any other person. Because on the day of judgment, we are going to stand alone. Not by the name of the family, not by the name of our church, not by the name of the Jew or your pastor or your prophet. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. On a daily basis, make sure you are still in the will of God. Deliver yourself from this untoward generation. We are in a generation that have, you know, left the presence of God. But stand out. Be among those that will know their God. They that know their God shall be strong and do exploit. God bless you. We thank God for that word. Let's walk by it. Let's know our God. And the promise of God is that he will release his spirit upon all flesh. With the spirit of God, you cannot be misled. Because they that are led by the spirit of God are the sons of God. Join us. 2 o'clock this afternoon. 4 o'clock. Is it 4 o'clock? 2 o'clock. It's 2 o'clock. Join us 2 o'clock. One on one with Yamishu Etan. It's going to be powerful. We have this word for you that we cannot even share on radio, but on YouTube and Facebook. Two o'clock. The real rema of God that will touch the heart of the people. Let's uh, be there to PM. UK time, Nigeria time, Ghana time. God bless you. God bless you. Our God is faithful. There's only one way to heaven. Religion. It's not the way. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. God loves you. You are welcome. See you another time. Amen.